I am a product of, of the 1960s multicultural movement. Even though I'm an atheist, I, I reject the organized religion, I have enormous respect for all of the world religions. That's a huge element of spiritual quest in the 1960s that's been forgotten. Okay? It wasn't just about politics. The politics were very important. The civil rights movement, the protests against the Vietnamese War, the, the, the reawakening of feminism, the gay liberation movement, all these things were very important. Okay? But there was this other thing, okay? this movement outward toward other cultures, this embrace of, of these tremendous poetic forms. The, 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 the great world religions, okay, are, are, they're, they're like, they're, they're poetry, they, they contain art and iconography, they, they're, they're a collection of tremendous wisdom about human life. If, you, if you're going to approach young people you know, from the position of atheism or secular humanism, you have to give them something else. You cannot just trash religion okay, and also trash art. Okay. What, I'm, what my atheism says, okay, uh, I, I reject, you know, the or I, I do not believe in a personal God, right? however, I see in, in the enormous force of nature, okay, in, I, I, the, my, my attitude toward nature is very similar to that of Native Americans. In fact, that's my next project. I'm, uh, I'm, my next project is about Native American and art and archaeology, precisely about this. I think that the, the religious view of the elemental forces of nature in the Native American Code. Okay, it was magnificent. It has many parallels to that of Wordsworth or Ralph Waldo Emerson, and so on. All right, I see nature. Okay, and I see art. Okay, the incredible beauty and power of art. And my attitude toward art is reverential. Okay, the same thing. Okay, these urban pseudo sophisticates. Okay, are incapable of reverence, okay, all right, all right, and so what, what, and so what, what, what kind of thin gruel, okay, is being given to our young people? Nothing, absolutely nothing, okay, and then we wonder why the entire professional class in Manhattan and Los Angeles, they're all meds, they're all, they're all doping themselves on tranquilizers, okay, antidepressants, okay, why? Because there's nothing, their, 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 their worldview is nihilistic, okay, absolutely nihilistic, uh, it, conventional thinking, right? It, it, they, they rejected religion, but instead they've made a religion out of the Democratic Party. Okay, I'm, I'm a registered Democrat, okay? But, 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 but Democratic politics of a particular conventional kind, okay? That is the substitute, okay, for the, for, you know, for the atheistic professional class now, okay? All right? And, I, and, and it's, it's what, sort of what I wrote years ago about post-structuralism, that post-structuralism was a new religion, you know, for, for these faithless, you know, Know, academics who had, who had and and I, and I said this was 20 years ago I said, I said better Jehovah than Foucault <laughs> okay the, re, the true core curriculum for the world should be comparative religion okay that is that everyone every young person in the world should know the sacred texts okay and and belief system of, of everyone else in, in the world and that's the only way we're ever going to get any kind of political understanding okay so everybody knows the bible everyone knows the quran and knows what you know and knows what these things are based on my generation was uh, inherited the interest in zen buddhism of the beatniks okay the the beats um, uh, you had to, you know uh, Gary Snyder, prominent, very important beat, uh, poet, who went off to actually become a, a Buddhist monk in Japan, right? and then uh, my generation made the movement toward Hinduism, toward India. Uh, that's why there were so many sort of sitar motifs, you know, in um, in 1960s rock music. Ravi Shankar was playing at you know at Monterey. The Beatles went off chasing their false guru, you know, in, in India, the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, and so on. So I, I, and, and and that, el that particular element in the 60s quest okay, has uh, been forgotten because, you know, because of that disillusion with gurus, but also, unfortunately, the pe the, the, uh, my, my peers of my generation who were most interested in these themes were also the ones who were taking too much, you know, too many psychedelics. Okay, so LSD, okay, on the one hand, opened doors okay, for, for for people to walk through, but then the, the door kind of closed be behind them. I don't know. So the, the spiritual seekers, okay, who are most adventurous of my generation, then through their 
we experimented with all, all of these things, as well as natural, you know, peyote and mescaline and so on. In, in effect, they, you know, they pickled the brains so that they, 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 they never were able to write the books that they should have. And I, I regret this not only because of the, of the cultural loss, but because that's why my work looks so odd. Okay, I look odd. They say they, no one can categorize me. They look, well, what is she? What side does she belong on? It's because all there's all these missing books, okay, they're, they're, and the missing people, okay. <laughs> So I really mourn them. All right. All right. Now, all right. now, on the one hand, okay, I'm I'm assailing um, you know the the liberal side of, of the cultural landscape in the United States. Okay, for for its um, its its snide cynicism about religion and its um, and this kind of snarky tone that's now everywhere, a sense of superiority. On the one hand, claiming to speak for the working class, but but feeling so superior to to the actual belief systems of the working class. I mean, I, I just despise you know. That, that, that's default snarky tone. On the other hand, I'm also criticizing conservatives and saying that um, conservatives cannot go on claiming to uphold the, the Western tradition and calling for a return to traditional educational you know, content and so on, at the same time as ignoring art, the history of art. But, but, um, but scholars and intellectuals have not made it easy okay, for mainstream Americans to, um, to learn about the arts. There's, I, I say in the introduction to Glittering Images that, um, that people who live in, in, in cities with major museums suffer from a tragic complacency about the condition of the of the arts all right I I am in, you know I um, have been a great listener to talk radio for the last 20 years I love talk radio as a populist medium and I regret the fact that so few liberals have succeeded as hosts in, in that medium the, um, the 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 home of liberal thought is actually at NPR there's a, a certain kind of a, a style of a, you, know, you know a vocal style Okay, and a tone on NPR that um, is that you know, I, I I think okay has become very genteel. Okay, it's the same thing as on the BBC. The, B, the BBC is is um, is extremely liberal as well. The the, are, the arts find a home in, on, in both NPR and BBC. But 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 that tone. I mean, like if I have to do it if I have to do an NPR interview, I have to like really, you know, f focus. Okay. Because, I have to get very mellow. <laughs> it's almost like a kind of seance <laughs> of gentility. And so you see, whereas my, my natural mode is AM radio, okay? And, and, and AM radio, all right, is this barking, abrasive, you know, colloquial style, it descends from the DJs of the 1950s, the ones who were like these crazy weirdo guys who were like, listen to this platter, and they would spin the song. And, that, and that, is the, that is the secret, okay, of AM radio. It's not, it's not just that it's conservative versus liberal that we're talking about, okay? But, 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 uh, but honestly, the, the AM radio format with its many callers, and people who call in from all over, and, and I would include, by the way, also sports radio, which also, also, also listen to a lot, okay? AM radio has provided an, a, a forum, okay, for voices which, who are not heard anywhere else in the culture. I mean, like on, on, on Philadelphia Sports Radio, I mean, people will call in, you know, from construction projects to like, to like talk about the problems with the, the Eagles game yesterday and this very learned analysis of everything that's wrong with the front line, and it goes on and on and on and on. People are calling from their trucks. I mean, it's absolutely you know, fantastic media, okay? All right, so at any rate, I, over the last 20 years on talk radio, I have been hearing this disrespect for art and for artists. Okay, that was really alarming me as a career teacher, you know, in, in, in art schools. Um, and I, re and I, of course, I know the reason for that. It's because of that those stupid series of controversies over over sacrilege and art that was inaugurated in the '80s with Andre Serrano's Piss Christ, which, for those of you who don't know, okay, uh, this is a third or fourth rate work. Okay, which is a it's a large for, for, format photograph of a plastic crucifix submerged in a glass beaker of the artist's urine. Now, Andre Serrano is such a weenie, okay, that he never would even admit that he had any kind of transgressive or subversive intention. Instead, he like backtracked, no, no, what I was really talking about was the cheapening of Christ's image. Oh, that's why you called it piss Christ. <laughs> right, okay. Now, you know, 
it, it, it's one thing if we're talking about a, a masterpiece, okay? I mean, my favorite work of sacrilegious art is by Salvador Dali. I name it in the introduction to the book, but I will not, I cannot even profane this august group, okay, by telling you what, what it is. It's a parody of the Annunciation, okay? It's extra, it's a, it is hilariously X-rated. In fact, it was in the Playboy Mansion collection until very recently. I don't know, I don't know where, where it is now. But that is my favorite work of sacrilegious art. This is a, a very wonderful work. It, it is learned, it, it, it is cheeky, it's audacious. The, for that, the art world, okay, she, you know, should, you know, should be you know, ha having a controversy, not over piss Christ. So it, it, and, and there was a whole series of them. Now, uh, as far as I'm concerned, okay, the, 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 the last authentically avant-garde work, okay, or body of work, okay, was done by Robert Maplethorpe in the late 1970s, his photographs of the gay, sadomasochistic underground in New York. And I, that, that, to me, was the, that was the end of the avant-garde, right? All right. I, what I'm, I'm saying to the, to the art world is that um, it, the avant-garde was essentially killed by my hero, Andy Warhol, from the moment he took in Campbell's soup cans, okay, uh, in, in, in the iconography of capitalism, okay, in, in, into his work. That was really the end of the very noble 200-year um, oppositional tradition of the avant-garde that began in the late 18th century, okay, with, in, in, with, with romanticism, okay? And, I, and what, I, what I'm saying is, is that for the last 30 years, post-Maplethorpe, post okay, uh, this, the, the, the subversive or transgressive gesture is completely hollow and has become utterly corrupt. Because once, if you made you know, an avant-garde gesture, there was a price to be paid for it. Okay? The impressionist painters starved. Okay? They had no way of showing their art. In a, if there were no art galleries back then. Okay? If, if they did not toe the line and produce the kind of art that the salon jury would show in their, in their either yearly or sometimes you know, every two years, massive shows, they, 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 these artists have no way of reaching potential clients, potential patrons. Right? So the Impressionists you know, and other such avant-garde uh, artists going all the way down to the abstract Expressionists of the 1950s who had had de terrible depression and suicides and so on, okay, a price was paid. What price has been paid, okay, in, in, in this era of piss Christ, okay, since the 80s? What's, what is the price that's paid? Right? You do something that, in, that you take a, something from Catholic iconography, always Catholic, right? Never Jewish, never, never Muslim, okay, always Catholic, okay? Take, take something Catholic and, like, and, and do something scandalous to it, and, and you will be written up, okay, and celebrated in the New York Times, okay? All right? You will get a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, okay? You will be hired by the University of Chicago, okay, <laughs> or Berkeley, or UCLA, okay, this absolutely corrupt. How dare these people, how dare these worms, talentless worms, okay, borrow from the great avant-garde tradition of people who, who really died, okay, for their art. It's an outrage. We can't tolerate this anymore, okay? Right? The idea that art, by definition, in t speaks truth to power. Oh, it interrogates okay. well, contemporary assumptions. Oh, really? Okay, that, this, is, this is utterly stale. Only a, a, only a fraction of art in the whole history of art, whole history of world art, has been oppositional. Only a fraction, okay? And it was a, it was a great run. It was a great run from the late 18th century down to Andy Warhol, okay? All right, with a little bit of a blip into Maplethorpe, okay? And that's it. That's okay. The only thing that ever survives from a culture is its arts. Political power is transient. Political power is nothing. Okay, it will vanish. The most powerful man of the world, okay, all right, is like is nobody. Okay, the only thing, that, the only way we remember any of the powerful men of the world is the way they were captured by artists, often anonymous artists in ancient Egypt and and, and Rome. Okay, so the bequest of any uh, civilization. Okay, and the test of its quality is its arts, and, and I feel that both, that the left and the right, everyone, okay, across the political spectrum, is guilty, okay, of offenses against the arts. And I hope that you now will go forth, okay, I feel like, <laughs> and be ambassadors for the arts. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay.